But no doubt COVID is still very much here, but the White House is ready to move the federal response from a pandemic to what they're calling an endemic. Joining us now, Upstate Global Health Director, Dr. Stephen Thomas. You know him, good to see you again, Doc. Nice to see you. Um, so what does that actually mean, an, an endemic? And as an infectious diseases doctor, how ready are we for this kind of shift? That's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, what it means practically is that a lot of the uh, vaccines and drugs and tests that people have been getting for free are no longer going to be free in most places. And you're either going to have to pay out of pocket or you're going to have to rely on uh, insurance to pay for. There will still be some places where you, you can get them uh, uh, for free, but but that, that number is going to be greatly reduced. So what that means is fewer people are going to be getting tested, fewer people are going to get vaccinated, and people who may need to get some of these drugs uh, might not get them. So, as again, I want to ask you, as an infectious diseases doctor, um, I know what they're doing politically, potentially, you could argue, but from an infectious diseases doctor, are we ready for that kind of thing? What's that going to mean? I mean... Yeah, you know, I mean, again, from, from the start, uh, I've been saying that this is not going to go away. It's something we needed to learn to live with, not live through. And uh, every kind of, we've been iterating over the past year or so, this becoming less and less of a a government issue and more of a personal uh, issue. And so again, what I think is that it means it's there's going to be fewer people who are sick getting tested, uh, which means transmission could go up and there's going to be fewer people even than there are already. There's few people who want to get this uh, bivalent booster. So those numbers are going to decrease. So, you know, we could potentially uh, we could potentially see a rebound of uh, transmission occurring. But again, without the testing and the reporting, uh, you know, it's going to be tough to know. Yeah, well, you mentioned that, that, that moving to this endemic would mean essentially a lot of these um, free tests that we have been getting, even insurance companies may not uh, cover them. So people aren't going to have a stockpile of, of home tests at home anymore. So what's the opportunity to, to be tested? Kind of if you really want to, you're going to try to find or even pay for these tests. I know that everybody else just We'll just go through it. Yeah, you're going to wonder. You don't know. Yeah, I maybe mean, you do. Maybe you don't. Right. 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 Oh. Yeah. I think the people that are going to be hit the hardest are the people that don't have insurance. Right. So uh, folks are going to have to pay for these things out of pocket. And I and, you know, I have obviously I, I'm not in the inner circle. I don't know what the government negotiated with, with these companies in terms of price of vaccine and whatnot. Um, you know, I think that it's probably not going to be inexpensive. And so I believe access to uh, tests that have to be paid for out of pocket access to vaccines and whatnot, um, it's going to go it's going to go down and it's going to go down for the most vulnerable uh, populations um, in our society. So um, I've got probably time for one more question, about 45 seconds. So we do know this. We know the variant XBB 1.5. It first showed up in the state in October. It's now, I think, over three quarters of the cases in New York State. Um, what and how soon will the next variant push it out of the way and emerge? Or how long does this one stay with us? Right. So that variant's making up about 70 percent of the cases that we're seeing in central New York. The new variant, the one that we're kind of concerned about, this CH uh, 1.1, which has occurred in, in the Pacific and, and Southeast Asia, which they're concerned it has elements of both Omicron, so highly transmissible, as well as Delta, which has made people very sick. So it has elements of both of those. That's making up about 5 percent of the cases that we're seeing locally. So that's the big that's the big concern, and we still don't know yet what these bivalent vaccines are going to be able to do or not do in terms of keeping people um, from getting less sick or hospitalized, you know, being hospitalized or dying from CH11. We don't know that yet. Dr. Thomas, I got more to ask you, so we're going to have you back again real soon. I'm out of time for tonight. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks a lot.